Hi, good afternoon. My name is Maria Andrea and welcome to Books and Bocadillos. It is Tag Tuesday on BookTube, so today I'm doing the Edgar Allan Poe tag. I commented on Mitzi from Mitzi Reads and Writes uh, video a few weeks ago that I'm a fan of Edgar Allan Poe and I wanted to join in on the celebration of Edgar Allan Poe. So let's get started. Question number one, what was your introduction to Edgar Allan Poe? My introduction to Edgar Allan Poe, if my memory serves me right, was seventh grade, uh, middle school. In my seventh grade English class, we read The Raven, and that was my first intro. And then sometime in middle school, I'm not sure, was seventh or eighth grade, um, I was in choir all through middle school and high school, and um, I believe that in middle school at one of our choir um, state competitions, we were given um, a poem from Edgar Allan Poe and the Annabelle Lee poem by Edgar Allan Poe, the choral version of that. And um, we sang that and it's, it's been one of my favorite pieces of music sung in a choir. Um, I'm looking at the poem right now on my phone it's, it's a beautiful poem and it was a beautiful song and I'm glad I got to sing it in a choir. Um, next question is, what is your favorite Edgar Allan Poe story? My favorite is The Telltale Heart. Um, I think I must have read that maybe eighth grade or sometime in early high school, um, but that's my favorite one. Number three is The Black Cat, um, a book with an animal as a significant character. And my choice for that is Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. Um, I read this a few years ago and it's a really cool fantasy exciting adventure story about a crow named S.T. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. The second book in the series is out and I want to pick it up, um, hopefully for that uh, week of weird that Crystal from Fiber Artsy um, is co-hosting in March. Um, Next, The Man of the Crowd, a suspenseful book where a character is fascinated by a stranger. Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I've mentioned Certain Dark Things in a previous video. They love that book, um, love that story. And in that story, a young boy, young, young teen maybe, um, he, is picking up trash. Um, he's on he's on the streets in Mexico picking up trash, and he becomes fascinated with um, this figure of a female shapeshifter, and um, it's beautiful adventure, thriller, um, fantasy. I highly recommend. I always tell people <laughs> if they're into monsters or shapeshifters or fantasy and they like the thrill of an adventure story with all the hijinks, um, gangsters in Mexico, escaping, um, all that adventure and thrill. Um, it's a great book and a light romance, but it's just sweet to see um, see how the romance buds um, in the story. So the next question is The Premature Burial, uh, a book featuring a graveyard. And one of my favorite books of all time is Lincoln and the Bardo. I even got a signed copy. Um, I love Lincoln and the Bardo. I know it's one of those books that you either hate it because you couldn't get into it or you love it. And I love it. Um, yeah, Lincoln and the Bardo takes place in a graveyard. 
Next is oval portrait, mirrors or paintings that are magical. The first thing that came to mind was Beauty and the Beast. I don't have a copy of Beauty and the Beast. The second one that came to mind is Snow White. I don't have a copy of Snow White, but I do have a retelling of Snow White that I haven't read, but I want to read. It's called Mirror, Mirror by Gregory Maguire. So I picked this up at one of my local um, indie bookshops here where I live in South Texas. And um, I haven't started it, but I would like to. I'm really into fairy tale retellings these days. So if you have any fairy tale retellings that you love, please, please, please um, share some recommendations in the comments. Um, the next question is Murders in the Rue Morgue, a favorite book or story with a detective or amateur sleuth. First, my first love for an amateur sleuth is Nancy Drew, and I have to I have to show off this little copy. This is a 1930, like first edition copy of The Secret of the Old Clock by Carolyn Carolyn Keene, and it's really really old. Um, I have found this copy on eBay, and I just really wanted the original 1930s, and I love the smell of an old book. It smells, it smells like my grandfather's library. Yeah. It takes me back. And it makes me wish I had a library. Like my, my dad and my grandfather had a library. Um, another one, Sherlock Holmes. I don't have any Sherlock physical copies. I have um, an audio, uh, audiobook of Sherlock and I have some Sherlock retellings on audio. I'm hoping to get into that soon and maybe do a special video about it soon. Next is Mask of the Red Death, an apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic story where people have been impacted by a plague or virus. For this, my first thought was, of course, it's a book that's at the bottom of the pile. <laughs> Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. My book club um, read this and I loved it. Um, I love Station Eleven. And I also really enjoyed the adaptation that came out last year. So recommend. Um, now, another book club. So the book club that I'm talking about when we read Station Eleven is one that I host. But one of uh, my friends, who's the owner of a local indie bookshop here in South Texas, she hosts a book, a book club as well. And I joined that one. And in that one, we read The Lightest Object in the Universe by Kimmy Isell. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Isell? It's spelled E-I-S-E-L-E. -E. Please correct me and let me know how to, how to say that if I'm saying it incorrectly. But we read this and it's it has the same kind of feel of Station Eleven where they're surviving a pandemic. Um, and it's about everything like going off the grid and full survival mode. Um, so if you like a survival story um, post pandemic, that's a good one. I think that, that one, the lightest object in the universe is a little lighter than Station Eleven in tone, um, there's there's like a, a love story that you're rooting for in that one. So it does feel lighter, more hopeful, um, because all the way through you're rooting for for these two people to come back together after being separated. Um, next question, question number nine. The Pit and the Pendulum, a genre that is torturous to read. I wouldn't say it's torturous, but it's just not in my wheelhouse. It's not a genre that has, or a subgenre that has gripped me. And I'm just kind of saying like in general, fiction or nonfiction, sports. Sports, 
whether it be fiction or nonfiction, I've never been able to get into sports, um, athlete, athlete stories, uh, memoirs. I've tried, but it's kind of like I try and then don't. Um, so if you have any recommendations of any sports, stories, memoirs, um, yeah, anything that's sports related. I do like sports. I love watching basketball, um, football. If I'm rooting for a team, I'll, I'll enjoy. I rarely watch football. If I don't have a team I'm rooting for. And when I say football, I mean NFL American football. Um, soccer, which is football, I'm a fan of. I watch every World Cup. And I, I root for, I root for my Latin American countries. Uh, I usually will root for Mexico. I'll root for Argentina. I'll root for, I root for Brazil, Uruguay. Um, I also root for Spain and. Um, And England, <laughs> I root for England too. I used to live in England for a little bit and I I know the fan, the fandom in England. So I'll root for England. Um, the Fall of the House of Usher, favorite Gothic fiction book. My favorite Gothic fiction author is Shirley Jackson. My, I, I have more, I just pulled two. I have, um, I have like four Shirley Jackson books in my collection but my favorite is we have always lived in the castle um my favorite so far i have not read um haunting on hill house i do have it i own it i've been wanting to read it i meant to read it when ollie from criminali and his book club were reading it but i just didn't get to it um but hopefully this year i'll, I'll be able to get to that one but so far we Have Always Lived in the Castle is my favorite Shirley Jackson, my favorite Gothic fiction. Um, next question is The Cask of Amontillado, an unreliable narrator. For this one, I've gone with um, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I read that one in my junior year in high school. So it's been a while and I want to reread it. So Sylvia Plath. 12, A Tale Tell Heart, a book with body horror. Well, for this one, I'm going to say A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson and Dracula by Bram Stoker. Now, A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson is, I don't know if you can say it's a retelling of Dracula. Really, I don't know that I would say it's a retelling of Dracula. But it's definitely a vampire story. Um, yeah, so those two are my picks for body horror that I would recommend. And um, the last question is to tag someone, and I just say tag. If you're a fan of Edgar Allan Poe, you like his poetry or his uh, fiction or the life of Edgar Allan Poe, you're tagged. So share with me if you do the tag so that I can um, hear what your answers are to these questions. And thanks for watching, like, and subscribe. And until next time, hasta luego.